Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Krista, for uh, inviting me to speak today. Um, I know the, the context of our talk this morning is on the future of online payments, and as I prepared my notes yesterday afternoon, I enjoyed the irony. I just had a good lunch with the General Counsel of Berenberg Bank, uh, Germany's second oldest bank, founded by Cornelius Berenberg in 1590. We'd actually discussed over lunch a couple of the issues they were facing, and, and they're surprisingly very similar to the kind of issues that we're uh, facing today in terms of developments. Back then, a lot of the issues around payments were, who am I dealing with, how can I identify them, do they have the right amount of funds, can I verify that? There are also concerns about usury, uh, interest rates, and that's, that's a factor today in terms of online credit and our consumers using credit. A lot of those issues haven't gone away, they're still there. Of course, the Renaissance banks weren't facing £50 million FCA fines for IT failures back then. We see some of our banks have suffered this morning, so some things have changed. <coughs> Just in terms of, uh, I'm going to go through some, some developments, but also look at credit and the FCA's attitude to payments and credit and how you deal with licenses. Um, in terms of uh, just a, a comment around regulation, how it links with innovation, I think at the moment there is a perception across regulators, both UK and at EC level, that the payments market does suffer from uh, some factors which are not competitive enough. Uh, there may be specific non competitive behaviour they're looking at. Maybe it's just not competitive in the sense it's not yet efficient enough in terms of giving merchants choice of who they want to use. I and mean, we've heard about that. There's now much more choice out there. But there are still some factors that make it hard for merchants to actually reach out and select which merchant acquirers they actually want to use, uh, which systems they want to participate in. At consumer level, there are issues in terms of consumers having access to payment accounts, access to credit. And some of that actually drives the behaviour we've seen in Kenya and Nigeria, that actually they need to find alternative methods. Um, there's also issues in terms of the payment systems, how people can access those. And I think a comment I've got is that the regulation is, in this case, driving innovation and being permissive of, of uh, change in innovation. Uh, we heard from P uh, uh, around PSD2, it's the new European Payment Services Regulations. It, it's creating new opportunities by way of regulation to identify that intermediaries in the market can exist, the banks need to accept the so-called initiation providers who can interface between merchants, consumers and their banks, take somebody's account details, go into their bank account and push a payment over. That's a permitted activity. You get a license to do it, the banks have to let you do it under the proposals. And the objective is to throw up potentially challenge to the method of using card or other instruments whereby you have to push out a payment round the circle of merchant acquirers, issuing banks, and you can pick up fees along the way. So there's a direct intervention from the regulators to say this is something that we are going to allow, you have to let it happen. There's also uh, new plays in terms of allowing so-called uh, aggregators, um, some of you might recall Egg Bank, other digital banks uh, at the beginning of, of the sort of last decade, they, they sought to aggregate people's uh, finances, their accounts. You can go to Egg on one online account, you could access all of your account information, your different bank accounts, your ISAs, your uh, investments, and that was resisted by the banks. They didn't like somebody setting up an interface that effectively uh, uh, acted as an intermediary between them and their customers. There was resistance there. It's taken a long time, and 15 years later, but the regulations at EC level are going to change that and are going to be permissive of those intermediaries and will allow them and, and make the banks tolerate them. Uh, so the banks themselves need to innovate and, and react to that. So there are things which are happening which directly stimulate opportunities. Uh, in my line of work, I see lots of non traditional entrants, even brand names that we know extremely well now, PayPal, are really non traditional if you think of it from the perspective of of that GC from Berenberg Bank who's been in the business for uh, uh, centuries. Um, mobile phone uh, carriers are, are looking at this payment sector with interest. They've got fantastic access to uh, customers. A lot of them are truly global. Um, they're, they're looking at setting up <coughs> non-traditional uh, payment accounts, uh, which is you know, going to be really interesting to see. Some of the larger technology companies big brand names that we know well, it sits well with their business and it allows them to drive their business and new uh, distribution channels. Um, 
in terms of what the providers are looking at, there's globalisation. We've seen some of the stats around remittance, the need for global remittance. We've become a global marketplace. People need to spend, send money overseas. That's a real driver. People are looking for, for solutions to that. There's a question around customer ownership. A lot of our clients have that issue. Uh, to date, it's been the case that you bank with you know, Barclays, Lloyds, or High Street Bank. There's a different question now as to who can own the customer going forward, who can be their main go-to app provider for their payments. And whoever wins that race uh, will have <coughs> opportunities to drive their revenues and cross-sell. It's a key issue. Incentivisation is also a key driver in terms of payments. It's so easy now for merchants to link up with payment providers and drive their business forward. You can use an app, it's got location services, so if someone goes to their app account, they can work out where they can get a coffee, maybe at a discount or a voucher, they get credit back to their e-wallet if they get their coffee from X as opposed to Y. It's, it's visible, it's right there, they could pre-order it before they get to the uh, coffee counter in the high street. And if merchants participate in that, that, that added value to their sales might be the difference between them edging ahead of their competitors. In terms of uh, credit, uh, specifically and uh, online payments, lots of emerging models there. I, I know we all uh, perhaps recognise the, the, the noise around the payday lenders. Uh, that's been well documented. It, it's a relatively new market, but it's you know quite rightly uh, caused a lot of, uh, I suppose, reflection on what exactly is our attitude to credit. Uh, what interest rates will we tolerate? As I said, that's not a new issue. Back at the Renaissance Banks, they were considering uh, interest rates and usury just as much as we are today. What is the right <coughs> level of interest? In terms of the regulator's attitude, it, they, they've drawn a, a pretty clear line in the sand. They regard uh, the high-risk, short-term loans to start at loans which are beneath 12 months and have an APR of, in excess of 100%. So their threshold, their capacity uh, in terms of their attitude is quite high. That, that's where they really consider high risk to kick in and then monitor those businesses quite carefully. Beneath that, there's a very broad range uh, and the regulator's attitude is, is tolerant. It accepts credit exists. Uh, it's part of the industry. The FCA is a new regulator in terms of credit. Uh, it took over from the OFT on the 1st of April this year. So it's beginning to sort of define its attitudes. But certainly, it, it is per permissive and it's risk-focused in terms of what it wants to look at. Um, in terms of dealing with rules and innovation, both in terms of setting up a business that are linking to with credit and payments generally, just, just a few comments from my perspective. First of all, get your licenses right. Uh, and I'll come on to credit licenses just in a moment. Uh, the lead in time to getting a license can be up to uh, well, certainly six months, but you've probably got quite a lot of prep to do before you put your application into the regulator to get a license. So you can easily be looking at nine months <coughs> perhaps as, as a minimum, it could be longer if you've got a truly innovative business. So you've got to identify pretty early on if you're starting up a new business or a new uh, uh, sort of business line, do I need a license to be a payment service provider? Do I need a license to uh, introduce credit? Factor that into your project timetable, it's so important to get that right. Otherwise, you're incurring fixed costs, you've employed staff, you can't actually get going with the business for months as you wait for that license to come through. Um, the second area to get right is in your customer journey. So many clients come to us, they've already developed their website, spent loads of money on IT, they've got a cracking website, it looks great, but at no point have they thought about the customer journey, about at what point do they actually need to, for example, do an, do an AML check on a customer, what information do they need about that person, at what point do they actually need to give them terms of business. It's only fair to do that, to tell the customer what they're actually signing up to. Can they be given electronically or sent by SMS? Or do you need to give them in a durable medium that they can actually keep and refer back to later? So there are particular standards you need to comply with. A lot of them are common sense. Um, in the way you think about them, that they're internally sort of reasonable. But unless you factor them into your customer journey, you're going to come to the lawyers or the compliance people and have to start rebuilding it. And it just adds cost. So just get that customer journey right. Um, just in terms of credit in, in particular, because I know it, it, it's a theme that we want to talk a bit about today. The uh, OFT was our regulator. It was deemed to be a soft regulator in terms of credit. It was criticised, for example, for the growth of the payday lenders. That moved over to the Financial Conduct Authority, the FCA. It's better resourced. It's got uh, sharper teeth. Um, and it's going to be more aggressive in terms of how it regulates credit. Uh, just for those of you out there who may not want to provide credit, 
or to use in your business, there is a, a, a licensable activity called uh, credit broking. It's very light touch. It's just when you affect an introduction uh, of your customers to, to credit. So if you are uh, even an online merchant, you've got that picture, maybe at home with her iPad, shopping on your online retail site, if you offer her the opportunity to apply for credit, even that will be affecting uh, an introduction to a credit provider. So you need a license for that. Um, the good news is it's quite simple to get that license, and I'll come on to that. Um, some of you out there might, uh, in your business, have, have historic uh, credit licenses. Uh, there was a, there's an interim regime whereby old OFT licenses have been uh, grandfathered or <coughs> kept safe for a year. And there's a process of rolling them through to the FCA's world during the course of next year when people need to upgrade and make a full application. Uh, so you might want to check in your business, if you're part of a large group, whether you benefit from that. In terms of newcomers applying for, for a license, uh, both in terms of payment services and credit, uh, the regulator is the FCA. Uh, there are lots of online tools in terms of whether you need a license. Um, it, it, it's quite, it can be quite light touch if you're just looking to intermediate credit. Um, you don't need a detailed business plan, you don't need uh, particular resources or, or staff, so it, it's quite easy to uh, get that license. Just in terms of the roles that different people play, if, if you're looking to uh, introduce credit online, first of all, the lender. It's the lender that's got the uh, responsibility to make sure it, it, it's lending to people in a way that is fair to them. It's got to assess their credit worthiness, it's got to check that actually uh, they can afford that credit. That shouldn't be underestimated as a task. It's not sufficient these days just to do a simple electronic credit check, check they are the person they say they are, they're at that address, and they haven't had any credit issues in the past. You've got to do it more to actually identify that they can afford the credit. And that means that some of the electronic sort of credit checkers are going to up their game in terms of identifying particular payment patterns through someone's monthly payment cycle, looking at their uh, salary coming in, identifying what they actually spend their money on, what their payment patterns are, all electronically, all you know, within seconds, and coming up with a score to work out could they actually afford this particular credit going forward. So it's a more advanced role, and people are rising to the challenge out there in terms of, of identifying ways of electronically checking that in, in, in almost real time, but it shouldn't be underestimated. The broker has a role in terms of disclosure and transparency. Consumer credit is a sector where you've really got to be spot on in terms of uh, giving people documents at the right point in time, otherwise credit can be void, uh, and before you know it, you, you've got a, a loan outstanding that you can't collect. In terms of the merchant's role, if you play your cards right, this can be quite simple. Uh, all you're doing is really presenting a promotion uh, for credit to the uh, consumers, you can get that signed off by the broker or the lender, so you're just repeating what they're saying, and provided you don't, you don't start saying anything yourself, and often in a technology-driven online world, you're not going to be, there's no real-time interaction. It can be quite simple for a merchant to discharge its duties in terms of getting its uh, uh, promotions right. <coughs> I'm going to end it there. Um, that's just me at the back. Uh, and uh, I'll hand over and look forward to taking any questions later. Thank you.